Don't worry, it's not what you think. We're going to be talking about creatine. Creatine is one of the most studied supplements of all time. Now, creatine comes in many forms. You go online, you go onto Amazon, you go onto any website, and you, all these different types of creatine. Listen, creatine monohydrate is often the cheapest, and according to the data, it's the best. Another crazy thing is when it comes to supplements or anything that's going to improve your performance and recovery, creatine is insanely cheap. I think that's one of the reasons people are so hesitant to get into it. They see something, they go, well, if something only costs that much, it can't be that good. But if you think that, you'd be wrong. Say you were going to start off with a bag of creatine, you were going to get 250 gram bag. It's about 15 pounds. That's 50 servings for 15 quid. So when we've got people now looking to other ways of bettering their performance or even their recovery, we've got people doing ice baths, spending three grand on a fucking ice bath or 30 quid on fucking ice to last in a few days. Creatine costs like 30p a serving at most. So what does creatine do? Now the majority of gimps on social media, this is their pitch to try and come across with smart, where the thing is, you know, adenosine triphosphate gets from ATP to ADP. <laughs> So the thing is, there's a phosphate molecule. No one fucking cares. Creatine helps you with your performance. It helps you with your strength. It helps you with your endurance. It just helps you perform better. That is the best and easiest way to think about it. And one of the main reasons I started supplementing creatine more recently was the cognitive benefits being associated with it. But if people like Andrew Huberman, a neuroscientist, are saying creatine is good for cognitive function, and it's only 30p a serving at most, I'm fucking taking it. A very common misconception is that taking creatine is gonna make you bloated and you're gonna hold water and it's gonna be like you're about to come on your period. But think of it this way, creatine helps you hydrate your muscles. It is hydrating cells, it's not bloating you. And our muscles are about 70% water anyway. Now you will get heavier, but your weight is just your relationship to the ground via gravity. Not many of you should be standing on the sad step looking for gratification in your life anyway. And when it comes to weight, aren't we past fucking this slimming world culture of going down to your local community hall and having Sally the fucking bitch tell you off again in a pound when the truth is you didn't have time to have a coffee this morning, you haven't dropped a shit yet before having your weigh in? So it's going to improve your performance, it's going to benefit you cognitively, it's going to cost about fuck all every single day. It's cheap, it's well researched, but it might make you a little bit heavier. So how much should we take? Many of you watching this have seen a gram before, maybe just less than a gram, but the recommended dose is about five grams of creatine, which is often one scoop in the tub. Yeah, the scoop that usually lives at the fucking bottom of the fucking tub. So you gotta get a fork out and dig in there like you're looking for the fucking lost city of Atlantis just to find the scoop to take your creatine in. One of those is about right. However, if you've ever gone to Thailand and had someone say, oh, big boy, you might need a little bit more than five grams of creatine because you're bigger. And let's think about this. The average scoop of protein is about 25 grams. And when we look at the research on protein feedings, which isn't really that even important, you need 0.4 grams of protein per kilogram of lean mass five times a day. So the majority of you are better off just having a little bit more than 25 grams. 30 grams would be better than you could establish that the majority of people that were to supplement that amount of protein would hit the threshold for muscle protein synthesis. It doesn't matter if none of that made sense, but what I'm saying is, considering you're not fucking pouring powdered substance that's worth hundreds of pounds a gram, it's cheap it's easy to obtain, it's effective. You could just give yourself a little bit more than five grams if you're a big person, maybe seven and a half, you know, having a scoop with a little mound on it. And if you're the fucking mountain out of Game of Thrones, you probably need 10 grams or more. There are basic recommendations that you should load creatine because you want to saturate the muscles with it. You could just start at five grams a day and do that, but it might take three weeks to saturate the muscles. So some people are like, yeah, 10, 20, 30 grams a day to try and nuke the muscles with creatine. But there are trade-offs with that. And often people can have gastrointestinal discomfort, nausea. I've certainly felt sick anytime I've gone near or above that 10 grams of creatine range. You just have it and you just feel a bit shit. So considering that the majority of us watching this would supplement creatine as a long-term thing to do for the rest of our life as a health-seeking behavior to help us with the performance and cognitive, just start slow and get the gains over the first three weeks, because there's no point nuking creatine for a week and getting sick of that gritty little fucking taste in your mouth when you finished it. Don't do the capsules, because you'll start to <laughs> after a while, because you've been necking so many of them. Just put five grams a day in and wait for the benefits to take a few weeks to kick in. That's what I'm saying. So what about the timing of creatine? So there's quite a mixed bag of research on actually when is the best time to take creatine before a workout, after a workout, should you be avoiding it from coffee? And there seems to be a slight minuscule benefit to taking creatine after your workout, but let me tell you this from experience. 
the most important thing when it comes to supplementing creatine and supplement timing is that you just get it in. Because even if you were to get it in, say, first thing in the morning with a coffee and someone would go, oh, actually, did you know you're better off having your creatine after the... Shut the fuck up. If the morning routine is when you get in all the shit that you don't want to fucking have, all of my vitamins, supplements, whatever, then do it then. As long as you get it in the person that remains consistent with creatine will probably beat the person that's nitpicking about the perfect time to have it. That's what I'm saying. So do we need to cycle off creatine? I'm gonna have to clear that up. We produce creatine naturally, maybe one to two grams a day. So what we're doing is supplementing and topping up that molecule in our body. So when we do supplement it, it is believed that our endogenous production of creatine is downregulated. So coming off would allow us to let it upregulate. But looking at the research and the different opinions of people much smarter than me, it just doesn't make sense to cycle off. And even if you were a creatine lover and you had to come off for whatever reason, it would probably only take two to four weeks for your natural baseline production of creatine to get back to normal. Derek from More Plates, More Dates, who's much smarter than me, also spoke about something called polymorphisms, where some people might even need to take much bigger amounts of creatine because they don't respond to it. But the majority of people that start supplementing creatine do often feel a difference, and that might be a placebo, but if a placebo works, it still works. There have also been multiple studies to allude to the fact that creatine can help reduce fatigue. I'm 33 and a half. So you're telling me there's a cheap supplement I can use that'll improve my performance, my endurance, my cognitive ability and reduce fatigue. And I just need to take it once a day and I can mix it in with any other drink or supplement that I'm taking. And there's no downsides, but there could be some. So the research on creatine and hair loss is to do with a compound called DHT. Now I'll be honest, I'm in my mid thirties. I'm obviously a testosterone ridden alpha male. So I'm experiencing some amount of male pattern balding. What do you call a line of rabbits running backwards? I received a hairline. And I did look into some compounds for helping me regrow some of that. Some of my friends taking it. So I looked into minoxidil and finasteride. And the way that they work for helping guys regrow their hair is they block this thing called DHT, which is a type of testosterone. And when I was looking at the side effects, erectile dysfunction, lowered libido, I was like, do you know what? I would rather have less hair on my head than I would have a lower sex drive. So what did I do? I got a different haircut, which makes me look like I'm receding less. But it's worth noting from what I've read from people smarter than me, it seems that if you are going down the route of losing hair and maybe attributing male pattern balding, creatine may make it worse. However, if you're someone that doesn't experience with that and you're not losing any hair, maybe creatine won't make it worse at all. And no, for the ladies watching this, considering taking creatine, it's not going to give you any crazy hair growth. You're not gonna grow a beard. But if you're a dude, it might make your beard a bit thicker. But again, I'm not seeing enough research on that. To summarize, creatine, I believe can benefit almost every single person that's keen to improve their performance, their endurance, their cognitive ability. It's cheap and affordable for people to use. It should be the first point of call over more other expensive, ridiculous supplements without the data or without the research or without the efficacy. I believe it should be used by men and women, but I believe everyone should be their own best scientist when taking it. Some people may not respond well to it. Others might get stomach upset or stomach issues with it. I think it's a good idea that you start with five-ish grams a day. If you're a bit smaller than usual, maybe four is okay. If you're a bit bigger than usual, maybe seven is okay. And I think that all of you should be following your program anyway. So when you're following your program, you should look to see if there are any increases in the amount of volume, the intensity, the amount of sets. Just keep an eye on your program. Any of you using fitness trackers like Whoops or Garmin's, have a look, is it improving your recovery? And I very much doubt that you would be putting the time and energy and effort into watching this video on my channel if you didn't take your own performance and well-being seriously. So my advice to you is if you're not taking creatine, give it a go. If you tried it before, maybe picking a more consistent routine and something more doable. And irrespective of your sporting background or ambitions in the world of fitness, training, nutrition, I think it's a bad idea to leave something so effective on the table. What I would like is for you guys to share your experiences with creatine use in the comments so that potentially someone that's got hearings maybe 50-50 on the fence can make the right decision. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. Bye-bye.